What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Celio's Network. Today continues my post-meta analysis for the Latin America International Championships that happened this past weekend. And today I am covering the day two conversion rates. We're going to look at uh, what decks went well from day one into day two based on how many entered day one, how many made it into day two. And I'll also talk about some notes that I have and then some decks that did not make it into day two at a 0% success rate. Uh, but some of that data is interesting, so we'll take a look at it. Uh, but first, I do want to let you know about PoTownStore.com. You can use code CELIO for 5% off there. And they have pretty much any PTCGO code you could ever need there. And it's emailed to you instantly. Also, check out FlipSideGaming.com and use code CELIO, all caps, for 10% off of any order there, $10 or more. Now into the video. Um, I do have the original RK9 Labs Day 1 meta share up here as well. For now, just to let you guys know, if you want to look at the original data, RK9 Labs on Facebook, uh, they without RK9 Labs, none of this would be possible because they're nice enough to show us these meta shares uh, I believe Christopher Shemansky helps with these. I'm not 100% positive if he, if he helped with this one uh, because I do believe he played in the tournament. Um, but yeah, if you want to see the original data, go check out RK9 Labs. And I've also used some data from Limitless TCG and ptcgstats.com for this video. Uh, so... Over here in column A, you'll see I have the archetypes. In column B, I have the day one meta share. So this is just how many of the archetype were in day one. And like I said, I do not have all archetypes listed. Over here, how many of the archetypes were in day two. And I do have all of the day two archetypes listed. So there were 88 players in day two. And I have 88. Uh, if you add up all these numbers, it adds up to 88. And then this is the day two conversion rate, which means uh, we'll take Nagana Del Guzzlord, for example. There were eight of the deck in day one. Three of it made it into day two. So its conversion rate was at a 37.50% uh, success rate or conversion rate, however you want to look at it. So that's just kind of how to read this spreadsheet. It's not very complicated. And we'll start with Charizard team up. So there was only one Charizard team up that entered into the tournament and it did make day two. So it has a 100% conversion rate into day two. Uh, but that that is not really significant since there was only one of the deck. Uh, next going down the line, we have Naganadel Guzzlord. Still not very significant since it was a small number, uh, but it is a rogue deck. And there were eight of it in day one. Three of them made it into day two. And that's at a 37.50 success rate, uh, which is really, really high. So uh, this included seven of the DDG and friends group that played the deck. And then also Gustavo Wada, who made top eight, uh, played a version of this deck, but it was independent from the other players. Uh, I, Gustavo played... Tina Chomp, Naganadel Guzzlord, and then the whole Miss Magia stamp engine, but also played an Omastar. Uh, his list is not public yet, but I'm sure it will be sooner than later on Pokemon.com. So like I said, only eight of these, so it's not super, super significant to show the conversion rate, but it is nice to see the conversion rates for these rogue decks or these small groups of players that all brought one deck to see how they did. So if you count just the DDG group, then uh, two out of seven of them. And if you throw Gustavo Wada, then it's three out of eight. So here we're getting into some good stuff. There were 23 baby blounds in day one and seven of them made day two. So 23 is a high enough number where I'll consider it uh, significant. It is a meta deck, and it's something that we expected to see play. Uh, so seven out of 23 is actually really, really good. That's roughly one out of every three players that played the deck made day two. Uh, so when looking at this kind of data, also note that it's important to take into consideration that the... Uh, types of players or the skill level of the players that chose these decks 
So when looking at something like Baby Blounds that had 23 players play it, 7 make day 2, a 30% success rate, and then look at something like uh, Whimsicott GX, 6 players played it and 0 made day 2 with a 0% success rate. Uh, the skill level or the meta knowledge or the intuition, however you want to look at it, of the players that played Baby Blounds is likely much different than the players that played Whimsicott GX. Next we have ADP. Uh, some of the most interesting ones to look at or the most important ones to look at I've put in the blue background and the reddish pink background. So like the Malamar and Guardian and then uh, ADP abilities are Mew2 Mew and Pidgeotto. So starting with the ADP, there were 95 Arceus Dialga Palkia tag team variants in day one and 24 of them made day two for a 25% success rate. Uh, this is really, really good. One out of four uh, that played it roughly made day two. And there were so many of it. And this really speaks to the validity of a deck. When this many, 95, can enter uh, a 700 and some person tournament and still come out with a really good success rate on making day two. So these are the kind of ones you really want to pay attention to. Uh, the deck got a lot of hype. It was played heavily. One out of four people that played it made day two. I consider that uh, very good for the for the archetype moving forward. Abilities art uh, didn't have too much hype, but uh, there were rumblings in the kind of sub communities or maybe like uh, subgroups of players that thought abilities art could be good. Twenty four people played it. Six of those people made day two. For exactly a one out of four success rate so this is a little bit different than ADP the abilities art ended up being like kind of a meta call per se I talked about this in some of my other videos but since abilities art was kind of off the radar and players were trying new decks that were unrefined abilities art ended up being really good for the tournament since it's aggressive and already refined uh, so this is another one that's good to look at since 24 people, a fairly significant amount out of 700, or at least more significant than some other numbers we have, and then one quarter of them made day two. Uh, next is Solvali, Solvali GX Quagsire, uh, the one here, Stefan Ivanov. Um, so again, this one is not very significant at all. Only four players played it, and then one made day two uh, for a... 25% conversion rate obviously that's this should not be compared to ADP which had 95 people play at 24 for a 25% conversion rate so I would say that a comparison such as Solvalley Quagsire had Solvalley Quagsire has the same viability as ADP based on their day two conversion rates a claim like that would not really have significant backing using this data since there were only four to one here and then ADP had 95 to 24. Uh, Mewtwo and Mew tag team variants another one that's very significant and I think very telling of the deck's viability. 94 went into the tournament and 18 made day two for a 20% success rate roughly one out of five players that piloted Mewtwo and Mew made it into day two. So again the same thing as ADP. Uh, the deck was thought to be strong, not necessarily as much hype as ADP, but it had the same amount of play. And then um, a fair amount of players that pilot it made day two, and uh, I consider that a success for the deck. Once we get down to this black line, I'll talk a little bit more about how I'm considering if a deck was successful or not. Um, so then all six played it, and three of those players made day two uh this is really kind of on the cusp again i don't consider this too significant since there was only a handful of players playing it uh, but if you do look at these numbers for what they are it has an 18 percent success rate into day two and then lastly above the black line is pidgeotto control uh, 48 players played it and seven made day two for a 14 percent success rate so still not too bad Pidgeotto had a lot of hype going in, but we knew it wouldn't be too, too popular since it is a control deck and those 
types of decks usually have a lower popularity. So getting to the black line here, I wanted to separate uh, the above 10% conversion rates and the below 10% conversion rates. So that's kind of how I'm, uh, I, I went into this wanting to separate it and it worked out really, really well based on my subjective view. So objectively, I was looking at if uh, one, in ten, one out of 10 players that played the deck or more made it into day two, let's consider that at least somewhat successful for the archetype. If less than one out of 10 players to pilot the archetype made day two, let's consider that at least somewhat unsuccessful for the archetype. And if I was looking at these archetypes without the data here, if I was only looking at column A, I probably would have put the line between Pidgeotto control and Pico Rom. Um, so let's just look at these decks. So Pico Rom had 32 players enter into day one and three players make it into day two. Uh, so, 9% roughly made it into day two. That's less than one for every 10 players that played the deck. Um, this is where I'll start considering it not too successful for the archetype. Malamar and Guardian, I also have these highlighted uh, since they have significantly high numbers entered into day one. Uh, but unlike the ones in blue, these had less successful rates. So Malamar, uh, 74 players piloted the deck in day one and only five of them made day two so just as i said about adp and mute two their success rates being very telling for the deck's viability moving forward i think it's the same for malamar and guardian but a negative uh outcome since it was only six percent at five percent here um before i forget i do want to note um that joe from omnipo commented on my last video about the popular decks from uh, LAIC or maybe two video videos ago about the popular decks and brought up a third variable that I hadn't uh, brought up in the video that Malamar and Guardian might have been this popular um, due to the availability of the cards for ADP and Mew 2 Mew or even just the cost for ADP and Mew 2 and Mew um, since that's something maybe we don't think about as much in our region, uh, Joe brought up the point that in LAIC, maybe the availability of cards um, and the price of cards, and I'll just add in even maybe the uh, casual to competitive level of the players caring about putting in extra money for the cards or not should be some variables that we think about in why these decks were so popular, even though they weren't thought to be as good as the other popular decks. Uh, so yeah, Malamar, uh, and well, we can just, Malmar and Nagquike had almost the same exact uh, percentage for uh, day two conversion rate. Malamar had 74 players play it and only five make it. Not very, very good for the archetype. Uh, Nagquike had 15 players play it, one make it. Um, honestly, the one making it is surprising to me. I didn't think the deck had any footing at all going in. Um, one making it into day two, and it didn't. Place very highly I don't think it finished in top 64 um, and then Guardian 72 going into day one and four uh, going into day two for a conversion rate of five percent that's roughly one out of every 20 players that played Guardian uh, so I don't think Guardian was a very good call going in and this data shows I don't think Malamar was a very good call going in and this data shows um, so here we'll have um, one that I kind of have disagreeing thoughts on. So Blounds GX, Blacephalon GX, I did think was a good deck going in. Um, 36 players played it into day one and two made it into day two for a one out of 20 success rate. Um, I'm going to explain this one as, uh, as I talked about the uh, skill level of players playing a deck like abilities art or baby blounds might be different than the skill level of someone playing whimsicott i also think it might be the same for blacephalon gx it has gotten the stigma of it being kind of an autopilot deck in the past and while i do think that has changed uh, with naganadel gx and amulet and some of the new tools it's gotten over time i still don't think the cream of the crop of players are the ones 
usually selecting Blacephalon GX. Usually the best of the best are looking for decks with more lines of play or more overwhelming power like uh, Ability Zard and Mewtwo and Mew. So Ability Zard would be the overwhelming power deck while Mewtwo and Mew would be the one with a lot of lines of play, different tech attackers and whatnot. Uh, so I do still think Blounds is a good deck, but the skill level of players that usually play it might uh, be a variable you want to think about when looking at the day two conversion rate. Um, next we have Green Zard 39 played it, which is actually pretty surprising. I didn't think that many people would play Green Zard. Um, I believe someone on my meta discussion did say uh, that people in Latin America really like Green's decks. So maybe uh, there's truth to that here. So that had a pretty poor success rate. Uh, Charizard and Brakeson on the Arcanine Labs. Um, on the Arcanine Labs Day 1 meta share, this was just referred to as Charizard and Brakeson. Um, and there was one Greens Charizard and Brakeson in day two uh, so that is as that's as specific as i can get for that one i'm not sure if all 25 were greens charizard and breaks in but the one in day two was and then for the last few down here i have some zero percent conversion rate decks that i just wanted to point out um i get the question a lot can dark box still be viable 17 players played it into day one zero made day two of course there's plenty of variables that i've mentioned that go into how many uh, players with an archetype go into day two and whatnot, uh, but uh, zero out of 17. Reshiram and Zekrom, this got so much hype when Cosmic Eclipse was announced and when it was being released, and it really fell off. Um, I I get questions, is Reshiram and Zekrom tag team viable? Um, I honestly don't think it's the worst of the worst. Uh, I have played some games of ADP versus it, and if they play like a Shrine of Punishment and you don't have your Choice Helmet down, that's really hard because they'll one-shot your ADP. And especially if you're not playing an End Resolve version of ADP, I do think Reshi Ram and Zekrom can just outspeed it. Uh, but 13 Reshi Ram and Zekroms made day one, zero, I'm sorry, played in day one, zero made day two for a 0% success rate. Uh, and then just down here, a couple other rogue decks. In case I get questions about them, Nuzzle Deck, six players, Beheem, six players, and Whimsicott, six players, and they all had a 0% conversion rate in today, too. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video of me going over the day two conversion rates for all of the archetypes that made day two, and also a few that did not make day two at the 0% success rate. Uh, let me know if there's anything I could explain better in these videos in the future or just any kind of content that you would like to see. Um, I'd be happy to try to uh, make some more videos that the viewers want to see on the channel. So thank you guys for watching. Like I said, use code Celio at uh, FlipSideGaming.com and PoTownStore.com, both great sites. And subscribe here if you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time here on Celio's Network.